Hi, I'm Kevin O'Connor, Senior Robotics Engineer for FIRST Robotics Competition, and today we're going to do a tutorial on how to wire the basic FRC control system. We're going to start by wiring the battery. To do that, you'll use the SB50 connector from Anderson with the attached wires that comes in your kit. You will need to crimp these lugs on. We have done so already on this cable. The battery comes with a hardware kit that includes two small bolts, two nuts for the bolts, two flat washers, and two locking washers. So we're going to fasten the terminals of the cable to the terminals of the battery, starting with the black negative terminal. We'll put the hardware through the flat washer. through the spring washer, through both terminals, and then we'll fasten the nut on the far side. To tighten the fastener, there is a Phillips head on the bolt that you can use along with a single wrench, or I prefer to use 5 16 tools on both ends. So a box end wrench for the side internal to the battery, whether that's the nut or the bolt head. Um, it doesn't particularly matter which way you face it. Um, and a nut driver or socket is helpful to tighten it faster on the side that's facing away from the battery. So we snug it up there. And then a critical thing to pay attention to here is this is not yet tight enough. This should not be able to rotate easily by hand. So we're going to tighten it down until this either doesn't rotate at all or is very difficult to rotate by hand. Now that's secure. Another thing to keep in mind is which way this terminal is pointing. Because you can't rotate it by hand, you'll want to consider before you assemble the battery which orientation is best for your robot. You can have the terminals come out of the face of the battery this way, have them come up vertically, or anywhere in between. But you'll want to choose before you wrap this with electrical tape because it will be more difficult to change after. Next we're going to insulate this terminal using electrical tape. Alright, we now have no metal showing, so this is insulated and safe from any tools or metal robot parts dropping on it and shorting across to the other terminal. Now we would do the same thing for the positive terminal as well. Next, you'll want to lay your components out on the board. An example is shown here for the option one board that sits on top of the kit of parts chassis in the long configuration. But as you can see, there's plenty of space to do whatever configuration makes sense for you and your robot construction. After laying out the components, we're going to move on to wiring the main breaker. So we will start with the side of the connector that interfaces with the battery connector, the SB50. And again, we have already prepared this wire by crimping on the terminal for the red wire that's going to go to the main breaker, and by stripping approximately 3 quarters of an inch back on the black wire. To strip this wire, uh, your typical wire strippers may not go up to this gauge, but you can use either the cutting blade carefully or a box cutter similar to just carefully cut around the insulation and remove it if you don't have a wire stripper for 6 gauge wire, because it's not a very common tool. So here I have a nut driver, and remove the nut. You'll put the wire terminal onto the stud, and then tighten the nut back down. Similar to the battery, you're going to want to make sure when this is tight that it cannot be rotated by hand. If it can be rotated easily by hand, it is not yet tight enough. So here it now cannot be easily be rotated by hand, and that's tight enough. And again, we will then insulate this connection just like we did on the battery. You will notice on the breaker there are labels. One side says battery, one side says aux. This is a non-directional device. It doesn't matter which you actually connect to the battery and which side you connect to the power distribution hub. After we have this end of the main breaker connected, that's the red wire, the negative wire will wire directly to the power distribution hub. So to do that, you just open up this lever here, 
insert the wire. Uh, you can give it a very light twist if you're seeing some strands not make it into the connector, but you don't want to twist this wire very much as you're inserting it. The connector is designed to clamp down onto the wire. And then once you're done, you should see no metal sticking out of here. Um, it is a little bit difficult to see inside and make sure you're not clamping on insulation, but if you've stripped that three quarters of an inch, you should be good on that. You can kind of see in there. I would just generally err on making the stripped portion of the wire longer, and then if you see metal sticking out, you can cut the wire back a little bit. That way you'll know that you are not gripped on the insulation. And as with all uh, connections that we're going to make, whether we crimp terminals or going into these, we can give it a sharp touch to make sure that it is secure. Our robots are going to undergo a lot of forces while they're playing, so any wire that we can pull out with a sharp tug isn't going to survive the competition anyway and will need to be remade. Okay, now that we've wired the battery, the robot side of the battery connector to the main breaker and to the power distribution hub, the remaining main battery connection is to go from the circuit breaker to the red terminal on the power distribution hub. So again, we're going to loosen up the nut on that side, take it fully off the stud. Again here we've already prepared our wire with the crimped terminal and with the three quarters of an inch stripped back for this main power distribution connection on the power distribution hub. We're going to put the terminal around the main breaker and we're going to put the wire into place into that terminal. So we're going to open up the terminal on the power distribution hub. We're going to get our wire into the terminal. Again, making sure that we don't see any copper sticking out beyond the plastic of the terminal, and then we're going to latch that terminal down. So now we're going to wire motor controller power to the power distribution hub. So to do this, we're going to open these Wago terminals using the latches. They'll click up and stay open. Then we're going to take our motor controller and we're going to strip back a half inch or a little bit more of wire. If you're using a tool like this, you may want to use the 10 gauge setting even though this is 12 gauge wire because the fine stranded wire is a little bit larger diameter so you'll find that the 10 gauge setting of the tool is able to strip the wire and won't nick strands as easily as the 12 gauge setting. So now that we have our wires stripped we just insert them one at a time trying to make sure we get no whiskers sticking out of the PD right like that and then we flip the lever down. Here we're wiring the motor controllers directly. If you do need to locate them further away from your PD, you can extend these wires using quick disconnects, splices, or other similar connections. Now that we've got it wired, we're also going to need to insert a breaker. And so there is a white graphic here that points to those two slots on where we just wired the controller. And so that's where we're going to insert the circuit breaker. So we want to make sure we're going straight vertical in there and going into the metal slots below. If you miss those slots, you can still get the breaker nearly vertical, but it will be very loose, very easy to insert. This is not inserted into the proper location. So you want to go straight down into the metal fuse holder and it'll take firm pressure to seat it all the way down like that. And it should be a little bit difficult to remove. If you do need to remove it, you can rock it back and forth to get it back out. And that's wiring the motor controller power. So next we're going to wire RoboRio power. So we're going to use any of these non-switched fuse channels here, 20, 21, or 22. So we'll go ahead and do 22. We're going to insert a small red 10 amp fuse that comes with the PDH. And then we're going to wire using these wide Mueller connectors here. So the wire should be stripped back about 0.35 inches approximately. I've already got a stripped wire prepared. You're going to use either your finger or it's a little easier with a small screwdriver to press down on the button and insert the wire fully into the terminal. And so you, you should not see any copper sticking out when the wire is secured. And you can give it a smart tug, make sure that it is secure in there. And we'll do the same with the black. And the wires for the RoboRio power are now attached to the PDH. So now we'll route them just under our main power here and take them over to the RoboRio. 
You can either take this connector out of the RoboRio using these vertical screws and do it that way, or you can wire it with it still in. So you want to come into these screws on the side, make sure the terminal is all the way open by turning counterclockwise on these screws. And my terminal is all the way open. And then the black wire is going to go in the terminal labeled C. And get that in there and tighten up that screw. And then we've got the wire labeled, got the terminal labeled V for the red wire here. And again, tug, make sure they're secure. And that's the RoboRio power. To power the radio, we're going to use the radio power module from Rev. So this connects right next to the RoboReel on one of these channels, 20, 21, or 22, the fuse channels that are not labeled switchable. So we're going to go using those same wide Mueller connections. We're going to run around, and then this device also has those same wide Mueller terminals, uh, red to red on the positive, and black to black. That device will also use a red 10 amp fuse to protect it. We now have our red and black wires installed on the power distribution hub. We'll route them down under these motor controller wires and connect them to the radio power module. Again, a small twist if needed to make sure that no whiskers are sticking out of the terminal. You want to make sure you don't have any copper sticking out when you're done. We can pull on these, make sure they're secure. To power the radio, the device uses power over Ethernet. So it's injecting the power into the Ethernet connection. So this means that it's very important to wire the correct Ethernet connections on the device to the correct device. So there's a port labeled radio, and we need to make sure we wire this to the radio, and a port labeled RoboRio that we need to make sure goes to the RoboRio, because the RoboRio side does not have the power injected, and the radio side does. Wiring this incorrectly has the potential to damage the RoboRio and will not properly power the radio. So Ethernet connection just inserts until we hear the click and then into the port on the radio next to the power connection that's labeled 18 to 20 volt PoE. And then we connect the other ethernet cable to the RoboRio port and run it over to the RoboRio. So when wiring your robot, you would want to secure these cables using a cable tie or tie wrap or other similar uh, to keep your wiring neat and clean. On this board, we have chosen, as I said, to go on top of the robot chassis. Uh, so our diagnostic lights on the radio and the RoboRio would be visible to field staff. If you're putting components above this or choosing a different location to put your electronics, you want to make sure to locate the RoboRio and radio so that these diagnostic lights are visible to field staff to help you troubleshoot any issues your robot may have connecting to the field while you're at an event. So that's the four LEDs here on the front of the radio they'll want to see, and the LEDs here along the side of the RoboRio, the power, status, radio, com, mode, and RSL lights. The next component to wire is the robot signal light. This light shows the operating state of the robot. This light will power on when the robot is on and it'll stay solid. When the robot is enabled, the light will blink. This helps field personnel understand the state of your robot and can also help your safety when you're operating the robot in your shop. So wiring this consists of two components. First, we need a jumper wire to go between the two outside terminals labeled LA and LB. So to take a small amount of wire, form it into a U shape and strip both ends. And we can just insert that in there, but not tighten it down yet because uh, we will need to insert another wire into one of these terminals. Uh, we can take one of them and tighten it down. We'll choose LB. It doesn't matter which terminal you choose to put the second red wire in because this jumper is connecting across. So you can connect your red wire to either of these that you have now jumpered. 
To connect between the robot signal light and the robo Rio, we're going to use this two pin cable. So one end already has the connection on it to go into the RSL section here on the bottom left corner of the robo Rio. So there's a little graphic depicting which way it should go. There's an S, and that's where the red wire is going to go. And then there's a little electrical ground symbol, and that's where the black wire goes out towards the outside of the robo Rio. The other side, we're going to need to cut off this connector and strip the wires back to connect them to the RSL. So we just remove the connector, gently pull the wires apart a little bit so we have some room to strip. Strip a little bit off the ends to make the connection. So the black wire is going to go into the terminal labeled N here. Um, if you need to loosen the connection, you spin counterclockwise on this screw to open up the terminal. You then insert that black wire and turn the screw clockwise to close the terminal. And we're going to stick our red wire in here along with our jumper wire that we have inserted into the LA terminal. Again, it doesn't matter which side you choose to run the red wire in as long as you have that jumper going across. We tighten down the screw. And again, we test and make sure that our wires are secure. So now our robot signal light is securely wired to our Robo Rio and ready to operate. So now we've completed the power wiring of our basic control system here. The last thing we need is signal wiring to have the Robo Rio be able to control the motor controllers, the pneumatics hub, and communicate for diagnostic information with the power distribution hub. So one option for controlling the motor controllers is PWM. So each of these RevSpark Maxes is packaged with this little black and white wire, and this is how you'll connect it over PWM. So this wire goes in on the right-hand side under where it says V minus. It's a keyed connection, so it'll only go one way. The black goes towards the outside of the controller, the white towards the middle. Um, so that just pops in there, and then you could connect this to the PWM connection. So the black is ground, and so that would go to the outside of the Robo Rio, and the white is the signal which will go along the S column of the Robo Rio. Here my wire can reach directly. Uh, if your wire cannot reach directly, you can extend this using a PWM extension cable that will have both a socket on one end and a plug on the other. And again, you would just line up the black on that cable with the black on this cable and continue that on to the Robo Rio. And again, keep that to the outside of the Robo Rio. The other way we can control the Spark Max is, is via CAN. That's this green and yellow connection that we would plug into the same location on the Spark Max. And that allows the Robo Rio to use some more advanced features of the Spark Max. It can control it in different modes. It can communicate uh, information about encoders, if there's an encoder plugged in, or if this is using a brushless motor that has an encoder. Uh, it, uh, it basically just allows for some more advanced features. Uh, we'll also be needing a CAN connection anyway uh, at some point in our robot to go from the Robo Rio to the pneumatics hub, where CAN control is the only option, and also to connect to our power distribution hub for diagnostic information. To wire the CAN bus on the robot, we're going to start at the Robo Rio. We're going to go around to each of our CAN devices that we're wiring up, and then we're going to end with the pneumatics hub. The reason this is done is because there, the CAN bus requires a terminating resistor. So there's a 120 ohm resistor that's supposed to be placed on each end of the bus. The Robo Rio has one built in. That is not selectable. So the Robo Rio should always be at one end of your CAN chain, no matter what. The power distribution hub also has a terminator, but you are able to remove that one. There is a small graphic here that says term and an on and off and you can take a small screwdriver or pin and flip that switch to off and that will remove the termination from the power distribution hub. At that point you could put any device as the end of your chain. You could go up to a tall part of your robot for example and have a motor controller up there but you'll need to provide your own 120 ohm resistor between the green and yellow wires at the very end of that bus. So for our example we're going to try and end with the power distribution hub and that's certainly the easier more secure way to do it but if your robot design requires it you can remove that termination and put the power distribution hub inside the middle of your chain. The CAN cable for the Spark Max comes pre-installed with these 0.1 inch pitch headers. So these can connect to each other to help continue the CAN chain and we'll show that to connect across all three devices. 
But to connect to the RoboRio power distribution hub or pneumatics hub, we will need a pigtail wire. So we'll either need to remove this connector or you can get connectors to make your own wire that connects to this uh, at many common electronics distributors. It doesn't matter whether you remove the plug end or the socket end, as long as you make sure to remove the correct one from each end of your chain of spark maxes uh, so that your chain is continuous. Here I'm going to remove the pin end of this spark max. And then I'm going to untwist just a twist or two of that wire, strip it so that I can insert it into the RoboRio CAN connection. So the RoboRio CAN terminals are also wide Mueller terminals. They operate similar to the ones we have already been dealing with on the REV components. You again press the button down uh, with your finger or a small screwdriver, insert the wire, and then release the button. Uh, the terminals are labeled H for CAN high, but it also tells you uh, YEL for yellow. Um, so we're going to insert the yellow wire into that terminal. And then the terminal labeled L also has a GRN for green, so we're going to insert the green wire into that terminal. So these are now securely connected there. Then we're going to connect across from this spark to the next spark by matching the pin side of one spark to the socket side of the other and making sure we keep our green aligned with green and yellow aligned with yellow. If you do connect your devices using these pre-installed headers, make sure to use the clip that Rev provides with these. These connections will not be secure on your robot without this or electrical tape or something to keep them together. This clip is a very convenient way to keep them attached, so now this connection won't come undone on my robot as I pull on it. So we've come across, we go RoboRio, Spark Max, Spark Max, Spark Max. Um, typically you would do all four the same, as you can see for example purposes. We connected this one with PWM, but we would go through all four. And then now we get to the other end and we need to again remove the connector in order to connect. Okay, now for the connection between the pneumatics hub and the power distribution hub, we take just a length of twisted CAN wire with no connectors on it. Because these both have the wide Mueller wire to board connectors, uh, this end is already stripped. We'll go ahead and strip this other end back and make that final CAN connection. Okay, we have now completed our CAN chain from the RoboRio through our motor controllers to our pneumatics hub, which you can just bypass if you're not using the pneumatics. You could go right from your motor controller to the power distribution hub. And then across from there, ending with the power distribution hub, we verified that our switch for the termination is in the on position. So we have the terminator at both ends of our chain. This will allow us to communicate all the way through the CAN chain from the RoboRio to the devices at the end. To configure these devices on CAN, you will need to use the provided USB cables and connect them to your computer one at a time and configure them using the REV hardware client. You'll need to set an address. You'll also need to install the REV vendor library, regardless of your programming language, if you are looking to use the Spark Maxes on CAN. And that completes wiring the basic control system using the REV control system components. For step-by-step -step written instructions and images, make sure to visit the WPILib documentation page. For help with other topics, such as picking a motor, making bumpers, and more, check out the technical resources page on the First Inspires website. If you're planning to use pneumatics for your robot, check out the separate video on wiring the pneumatics linked in the description below. Good luck, and we'll see you at the competition.